Hey, thanks for tuning in. I wanted to share a really fun recipe today and it is easy chicken katsu with java curry dip. Yummy! And I have so much fun setting up for these videos and sharing the recipes and this is a recipe I've been wanting to share for a while and um, it's a twofold. I get to share the recipe and I get to feed my family. So this is a really good one and I'm going to make it easy for you. All right, so it's one pound of boneless chicken thighs. So I have it right here. Boneless chicken thighs, about a pound. One package of panko flakes. So I just grab any panko flakes, but this is the one that I usually end up getting. And it's by this brand. And they seem to be really flaky and it cooks well. So if you could get this brand, Shirakiku brand. This is a brand that I would get. All right, one um, egg, one egg right here, okay. One teaspoon of salt, just my house salt, and one box of your favorite curry. So this is my favorite curry, Java curry, medium hot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this curry started. So we'll work a little bit backwards here and um, I'll open up a package for you of this java curry. So this is just half the package, so I'm gonna put half the water. So half the water is about two cups. And if you've never seen it before, it looks like a piece of chocolate, okay? So it has kind of a yellow tinge. It's very strong in smell, and it looks like bricks of chocolate, but it's definitely not <laughs> chocolate. My mom used to cook this when we were little and I would kind of just like, what is that? Is that chocolate? And I did end up uh, eating it and it is so delicious. So now that 40 years later, <laughs> I'm getting to cook it and show it to you guys. So I'm sure you've seen it before or cooked it yourself. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop it in and melt it down to make the sauce. Okay. So got that going. Okay, and I'll pan in on the food later, but um, I do have to show you some of the important stuff on the chicken. So, of course, the chicken has to be um, prepared. So, I got the chicken here. All right, I'm going to break the egg, scramble the egg. Because what's going to happen here is I'm going to take the chicken, dip it in the egg, and then dip it in the breadcrumbs. So I'll show you a few here. And I put the breadcrumbs in a bowl here. Okay. So let me pan over just a little bit to kind of show you what I'm doing here. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the chicken thigh, so this is a strip of chicken thigh, okay, I'm going to smother it in the egg, and then I'm going to put it into the breadcrumbs, I'm going to kind of push it in so that it will, I guess, absorb the breadcrumbs and no need to shake it off because then you just shake off all the breadcrumbs. Okay, so that's one. And you just keep doing this until the very end. Okay. Let me show you a close-up here. That is one, another bread, breaded breadcrumb um, chicken. And then put it in here. There's another one. Oops. Egg first, then the breadcrumbs. So I'm going to put more breadcrumbs into the bowl because it was not enough. So that's the nice thing about breadcrumbs, you could just keep adding. And I am mixing around curry here because it's already cooking. Alright, so you just 
just keep doing it now. Um, I have a family of five, and then sometimes I'll have my extended family over. So one pound of chicken is not enough. So I would say for this, probably get three pounds because um, people want leftovers the next morning. So three to four pounds if you want leftovers. And believe it or not, it's pretty decent and crunchy the next morning if you warm it up. So yeah, three to four pounds. So you would have to um, estimate that you have enough breadcrumbs and you probably have enough java sauce if you cook the whole box. Okay. So that is the panko breaded chicken right there. Okay, so that's about a pound and that is about maybe seven strips. Okay, so the next step is getting your frying pan and putting it about, depending on how big it is, but this one looks about maybe one inch in height, which is a good size because these chicken thighs are kind of flat. So you kind of want it um, covered the, up to the top, but not completely submerged is how I've, I've been cooking this for a while. That's how I've seen that the chicken has turned out well, not completely submerged, but maybe 80% um, covered. Okay, so you didn't get to see the java curry boiled down, but I'm just gonna pan it here towards you. I'll actually bring it to you. But this was half the box and about two cups of water. And there you go. I'll bring some straight to you. So this is the dipping sauce or the sauce you can pour right over. It depends how you would like to eat the katsu, like katsu bite or you want to eat it bites a bite with sauce over the top and rice. So that is the java curry. I like my curry dark and um, this is the medium hot. Doesn't that look delicious? Okay, so we're gonna put this to the side and bring it back later. So I'm getting my oil there ready and I'll be putting the chicken in really soon here. All right, so Let's go ahead and put it in. One tip about frying katsu is um, you don't want to move it around too much because it's breaded. And if you move it around too much, then it starts to lose the flakes and of course lose its crunch and flavor. So I've noticed that when I put it in, I tend to just leave it for about 15 minutes on medium heat on each side and walk away so that um, the, the bread crumbs don't start shedding. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on. Okay, let me move it right back to, down there. I see me putting it in. So I'm gonna set my timer. I'm gonna set it for 10 minutes. These particular pieces are a little bit thin, so I'm gonna set them for 10 minutes to make sure I don't walk away too long and um, they don't burn on me. So they're looking pretty good already, just sitting there in the oil. But um, let's review the recipe. Again, it's one pound boneless chicken wings cut into cubes or stripes, strips and then one package of panko, one egg, one teaspoon salt, one box of your favorite curry, and of course oil for frying. So um, for, the, for the salt, I've noticed with cooking with this that if I add the salt with the panko and mix it up, it tends to lose the salt when you fry. So I go ahead and salt my 
my chicken after the fact so that it can retain the flavor. And um, I would say for every pound, you could probably start off with about half an inch of, um, sorry, half a, half a teaspoon of salt, and then you can go up from there, but probably not more than one and one half teaspoons will be too salty. So maybe one half to one half teaspoon to one teaspoon of salt. And um, pepper is not necessary, and we'll be using them as dipping, the java as dipping, so that will add more flavor. Okay, so the nice thing about this show is my home cooking show. So I can do whatever I want. That's a very nice thing. I could say whatever I want, I can cook whatever I want, and I can wear whatever I want, and I can film any time of the day. So that's very, very nice. That's what makes this home base cooking show so fun and thank you for supporting and watching and getting the recipe. Um, I'm proving that the recipe works with my um, with my particular choices. So don't be afraid to cook it. You'll, you'll, you'll come out okay. Just follow the steps. Okay, so I just went ahead and put some of the java sauce in here. And um, the nice thing is I was able to cook some katsu bites ahead of time. Don't those look delicious? So, let's see what we got here. So here is one bite, it's like a, the size of a chicken nugget. Doesn't that look delicious? And here is another one. Okay. And unfortunately, I don't have a thermometer. Okay, but I've been cooking chicken so long that about 10 to 15 minutes on each side, I know it's cooked. Okay, there's another one. All right. So these are about the size of big chicken McNuggets, but these definitely taste better. I wouldn't say they're healthier, but they do taste better. <laughs> and um, since my objective for the show was katsu bites with java chicken, um, java dipping sauce. I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how to just go ahead and dip it. And no rice necessary, guys, no rice. So this can be a little bit um, along the lines of keto and you definitely won't miss the rice, definitely won't. Okay, so one thing I did mention was adding the salt after. So that's about one half teaspoon. And this is about one pound. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just pour it over the top like that so that everything kind of gets an even amount. All right, there you go. I'm proving that the recipe works easy chicken katsu bites. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pan it back to the work in progress here, just to give you a feel of where it's at. It's about, this is about maybe five, six minutes in. So I'll just show you the bottom of them, because the top, of course, is exposed. It's not being fried right now. Okay. So they're coming along well, and of course each frying pan is different. So you do have to tend to it. Some will fry unevenly, but you just have to definitely tend to it. Well, thank you so much for listening. I hope you try the recipe, and um, don't forget to sub subscribe to my channel and tell your friends to subscribe if they love cooking and eating. All right, take care.